Last time, we removed the dash, did some work, and had some fun. It's also possible that the dust is um, load-bearing. So if you've ever wondered why mechanics charge 40 bucks an hour for labor, this is why. This time, we'll be taking another big step toward our final circuitry, ordering the first round of batteries. A lot of this process is researching and ordering parts, and then waiting for them to arrive. Planning is not particularly telegenic, so we haven't been filming much of it. First, we need a motor. Then, we need batteries. We can't just hook the batteries up to the motor and go. We need a potentiometer pedal that lets us control how much power flows to the motor, like the gas pedal in a gas car. And we need a controller, which is a device that reads our input from the potentiometer pedal and sends the information to the batteries accordingly. Even charging the batteries isn't as simple as plugging them into the wall. The wall circuit is AC, and the batteries are DC, so you need a transformer. And you need a battery management system, which interfaces between the batteries and the wall charger, determining which batteries need to be topped off. You can't just charge the batteries forever. They'll explode. In technical terms, explosions are considered bad. Let's talk batteries. Lithium iron phosphate batteries have pretty good energy density, are relatively safe, and don't require the manufacturer to dig up nickel and cobalt, which are rare and irreplaceable. The only cobalt that should be on the road is this one. How many batteries will we need? That depends on how fast and how far we want the car to go. Two general principles apply to a battery bank. More voltage equals more torque. That means the wheels spin faster. More amp hours equals longer range. That means the wheels spin for a longer time. The Acti was originally built as an urban light construction vehicle. It's meant to haul stuff short distances in cities. That's got good synergy with the way EVs work. Because EVs regenerate some of their power when they break, they're actually more efficient in city driving than on highways. Gas cars, of course, are the other way around. Since both the Acti's original design and the nature of an EV lend themselves to short urban commutes, we're leaning into that. We're not going to try to build a street racer or a road trip vehicle. We're going to build an urban commuter. So we don't need a ton of voltage. The car can top out at 55 miles per hour and we'll be fine. That's basically what we get out of the current engine. We envision adding up batteries in series until we have a battery bank between 72 and 120 volts. We also don't need a ton of amp hours. If we get 30 miles of range in normal conditions, that would be a win. The plan is to build battery banks out of 100 amp hour cells and stack two of those banks in parallel to get 200 amp hours total. So... How many batteries exactly do we need? We don't know yet. There are calculations we could run to find an estimate, but the Acti has a weird aerodynamic profile. It's the one thing about it that actually isn't suited to an EV conversion. We also don't know the final weight of our build yet, so the only way to really know how far the batteries will take it is to buy some and run some tests. The guy from uh, Georgia texted me a link to 100 amp hour, 3.2 volts DC batteries. They're lithium iron phosphate batteries, four of them for 250 bucks. Uh, I had been looking at batteries of half that amp hours for 200 bucks. So for 50 bucks, we get double the amp hours, um, which is extending the range of the vehicle. My favorite thing about amp hours, the fact that the abbreviation is ah! <laughs> on a, like a cell phone battery, it's milliamp hours, which is ah! Remember the earlier video where we almost had to go to Australia to get free shipping? This time, we could save $75 on shipping by driving just an hour out of our way on a road trip I already intended to take. On our trip, we passed wind farms in central PA. How could people think they're eyesores? They're so elegant. Yeah. We also started seeing solar roofs on homes around Bethlehem, PA. I failed to get a single wood picture out the car window. When we briefly crossed the line into Mercer, New Jersey, they were everywhere. About one in every five roofs we saw. The deployment of solar and wind is a reflection of policy priorities. Although both energy sources are site sensitive, whether you see them somewhere has got almost nothing to do with whether the site is optimal. It is dependent on public policy. Our reliance on fossil fuels is a policy choice. We're here at Battery Hookup in Ben Salem, PA, and we've got five cases, four batteries each. Should give us about 64 volts which will probably be about half of what we need eventually, but we gotta test to see how far these actually move the thing and how fast, and then we'll order however many we need to do the rest. While we wait for the opportunity to pick up our next set of parts, we continue to refine our radio. If you're just watching for drive system modifications, you can just skip this segment and go on to the next video. So the Acti has a passenger side speaker, but in this driver's door, no speaker. Uh, there's a speaker panel. Nothing is actually wired up. You can see there's nothing going into this door. No power electronics at all. Somewhere behind there, there is a pair of wires. We can hook up a speaker. Put a speaker in here, run the cables through here, up into there, and connect them. And we should be uh, good with two speakers. <laughs> That's right, the Honda Acti is stereo ready. 
Jason's garage is absolutely full of man stuff. You know, this is our working setup today. So Dave said we've graduated to a whole new level, a whole new generation of manness. What did you say? Just think it makes us old. We don't really want to be on video eating Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> we are using scope of Boris to find uh, the speaker wires. We send results back to home country. That is where they terminate. You see that red and black? They're up on top of this tubing. It would be very hard to do this without taking the dash off. We're taking turns shoving our fists into a hole. I really feel like I'm probing an, an anus. You're gonna feel <laughs> something here, but you know, it'll be a little cold. Oh, it's actually really warm because it's the LED. It's <laughs> yes. red, red and brown. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's them. Although we found where those wires terminate, we can't like pull them out to work with them because they're taped to this plastic tubing and they're fully taut. There's no slack in them. Since removing the dash is a lot of work, we started a list of modifications that require it and we'll do them all at once later. Meantime, we can still install the speaker. Four ohm impedance speaker, $6 at Goodwill. In 2003, if you wanted just a little bit of extra kick behind your Counter-Strike game, <laughs> speaker originally shipped with satellite speakers that would be on either side of it but because it's kind of orphaned no one else was gonna buy this it consumes five watts viewers will remember that we saved four watts by replacing the shitty bulb when we replace the headlights we're gonna save even more the whole system will end up being more efficient there is room under the seat you could put the subwoofer under the seat facing up have a switch for turning it off so it isn't always consuming electricity but we're thinking about this is gonna be hooked up to an AM system anytime the audio peaks it's just gonna send a blast of air up into your ass you know that could be fun the six dollar speaker is gonna get a second life no user serviceable parts inside well we'll see about that look at all this stuff that I want to lick. What are these things that we're looking at? Like they're various materials and like ceramics and shit and you put them in the right order and then like Frank Sinatra sings to you. This, this stuff is magic. Where's your berserker costume? You should be in Washington right now. This is the stupidest thing I've ever done. Do you think Goodwill would let me return it at this point? Sir, that was sold as is. You should give it to them with the hatchet sticking out of it. There's our speaker. That's a pretty fat speaker. Yeah, I don't know if that's gonna I fit. For. So the real question is how can we upcycle this speaker box? <laughs> That's a good suggestion. I guess there's just going to be one of those in every other video. <laughs> I used your hatchet. Probably not until I chose it. <laughs> well, you weren't here to stop me. I thought it was a great idea. What the fuck is yeah. this? I don't know if that's going to fit. What damn it. God damn it. <laughs> it's a magnet in there. I lost a battle with, with a chipmunk earlier today, so this is par for the course. I'm gonna test the speaker, make sure it actually works before we go ahead and drill holes and shove it in the door. Although we did already ruin it, so, you know. There's no returning it at this point. We're short six bucks. Hey! Great. Um, oh, yeah. yuck. <laughs> That's your bird shit that goes inside your door. At least when we take it off, we can find out what kind of spooge that was in the door. Oh, oh. man, look at that. Look at that horrible ugliness. That's what you were touching. Yep. That is what I was touching. Can you pull it out so we can see? Yeah, that's just a hole in the door. We went to a hardware store, we bought everything we thought we needed, and we realized that our spacing plan wasn't going to work out. So our solution is to just dig a bunch of nuts out of this bin of stuff and stack them up on the bolts. So our efforts have been rewarded by this beautifully mounted, very firmly mounted speaker. The window can now go down all the way again, which it couldn't for a while. Okay, we're trying to get a wire up through the door here. Yay. If I'd realized that this whole thing was one piece, I would have just pulled on it. I thought it was like a piece nested inside another piece. That's what I thought too. We are now trying to thread the speaker wire through the sides of the door. It's going to go through our plugs here, which are going to keep everything watertight. Look at that. Great. Here we go. And Jason got it and made a satisfying pop. I think we can make an ASMR video with that. Grommet pops, that's the word. Grommet pops. Grommet pops. Grommet pops sounds like some kind of old person porn. The Grommet I, Pops saying, Orchestra. It sounds like a cereal to me. Grommet Pops. That's what I like in the morning. <laughs> it's it's what old people like. I think there's a, like a Keeps me regular here somewhere. <laughs> Don't have to put my dentures in. Wallace and Grommet. Yeah. That's what happens when Grommet gets too old. Yeah, well, Grommet is a dog, so surely yeah. by now he would be dead. Yeah. He's, he's, no, he's up, what is it, at the farm upstate? Oh, yeah, he's at a farm <laughs> upstate. <laughs> oh, I made myself sad. I love Wallace and Gromit. Do you ever see All Creatures Great and Small? It's about a veterinarian who, like, uh, every episode, he has to put his arm up some cow's butt. It looks a lot like this. I was going to rotate this so we don't have too much kink in it. We are kink positive around here. 
actually is really satisfying. So I spent a good five minutes washing my hands to get all the car glue off my fingers. Some of it's just a part of my body now. Jason's cat, Grizabella, is like a long-haired cat, and she asked me to pet her, and I didn't do it, because if I did that, then she would just become forever stuck to my hand, which I think explains how the ball works in Katamari Damacy. We got some of the car glue crud on the drill bit. I thought, well, I'll just get rid of it by drilling into the particle board. Dave was like, well, what if it becomes a Mr. Bean comedy of errors? The drill gets stuck to the thing, and my hand, because I had glue on it too, is stuck to the drill, and I'm like waving it around, and it's like spinning in circles. Go to the emergency room like that? Or... <laughs> well, it's, it's never the emergency room, because he's never where he's supposed to be. But you've got some important appointment, like a job interview, for example, that you can't, you can't afford to miss it, so you're just like, fuck it, I gotta go like this then. And then like, you end up stuck to, to the boss to, when you shake hands. Be, yeah, and you just pretend to be working on it. You're like, you know, like, and if I work on this in the waiting room. We've just taken one of the fuses out of the fuse box and we've put it in this fuse tap. So we've got our 10 amp is the fuse out of the fuse box. You can see the lower ones for the uh, original circuit. And then the second circuit, I put a 15 amp in here for now. I just had to borrow one from another circuit and I'll replace it with probably a five amp later. And we're gonna crimp this on to our power cord for the radio adapter. And then we're gonna run the other side to ground. We've got the uh, fuse tap crimped on and now Jason's trying to get this ground. We have to find some unpainted metal, um, brake pedal. I'm just put it right here. Yeah. Yeah. On the clutch. That won't get in the Can't way. think of a time. Oh, yeah. every, every time you work the clutch, it's going to come off. So, just think of it something. as a clutch activated radio. Drilling a hole for the ground screw. Sounds great. We've finished the radio. It sounds like a distress call from deep space, but it's done. Subscribe to join us next time as we work on making the car more energy efficient and take it for a joyride. Or maybe throw a couple bucks at our GoFundMe to pay for parts. The link is in the description. Greetings, humans.